This next question is about behavior and etiquette with the Quran. Yeah. Uh, so let's just kind of like free flow here. Speak, what speak. is uh, proper etiquette with the Quran? So etiquette with the Quran. I think we all have to recognize before I tell you what's right or what's wrong. Etiquette specifically with something that is adored, loved. The Quran mm -hmm. has an element of emotion. Yeah, but it's it's like not even about right or wrong or emotion. I think it's manners, right? Uh, yes. Right, because uh, even with manners, someone will say, "But where is this written that you can't do this, that you can't do that?" It's okay. Yeah, but akhlaq is not something that's necessarily. I mean, it might be codified to a particular group, culture, and people, but like some elements, like because because I'm looking because etiquette and akhlaq is I guess interchangeable, right? I think so. Yeah, and so. Uh, something as simple as attire, right? The covering of the head, right? For uh, in some cultures, for the men, i.e., case in point, uh, male it, and female, uh, it would be appropriate and advisable, recommended as an act of humility to cover your head. Split that to the other side of the world, i.e., where we are now, it's the opposite. People generally cover their head as a fashion statement, whether it be a hat, baseball hat, a you know, a hoodie, whatnot. And as an act of humility, you take that off, right? right? As a means of showing respect. So, and that's what I mean by, I guess there's a local cultural context of the etiquette and akhlaq. And a part of that comes down to like... And, how a, and a discussion right into that though, uh, would, would then draw a line to... Would the Prophet wasallam is it narrated he would cover his head when if when he read or when he ate? Yes. So he did. So then you get into a discussion of, um, yes, it's a culture here, but we're bringing in a, a, a culture from the Prophet wasallam, not from a society, but from a religion. Maybe, I guess it becomes more of a fit question yeah, too. Yeah, it becomes. Because right? then some people say, no, he... he it's like dressed. he come in with a baseball hat, like, you know, chilling, bent sideways. Kind of thing, and then you sit down and start in, in a formal setting and, and start reciting the Quran. They're like, "Yo, what are you doing?" That's disrespectful, right? Uh, too like, casual. Yeah, they'll say. Whereas the hat gives a sense of uniform, and then a younger generation will say, "But well, you know, where'd the hat come from?" Yeah. yeah, but that the hat did come from the people of Medina. Did cover their heads, but the, I, that's the thing that I'm saying is like the way that they cover their head is very Arab. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like would the same etiquette apply? Like, okay, I'm going to read Quran, let me pull over my hoodie. Right. I, I, I think when it comes to Quran, walk a fine, like walk a fine line. Walk the, walk the conservative line of, and I, I very rare that I say this, what's everybody doing? And, and I say this specifically because Imam Malik said, I would take the narration of one person from one person it wouldn't hold as much weight as the actions of a thousand from a thousand. Think about that for a second. Yeah. You I mean, that's, like, that's a showcase of what is the culture of the area. Right. Right. I, I would, that, and, but who was he? The Mufti of Medina. Yeah. And he said, this land has the Prophet wasallam on it. He's walked here. He's, he's eaten here. So etiquette comes to, there is a way the Prophet wasallam sat, walked, talked, the way he read Quran. The fact that they venerated it uh, and respected it, but not only by not putting it on the floor, it goes back to that same concept from the last question. Do you believe these words came from God? Do you believe that then God anointed uh, and touched a prophet in the middle of Arabia who couldn't read or write, and surrounded by rocks and desert, and all of a sudden he started being inspired by the worlds of Gabriel, who you know from the last 8,000 years of story, from uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam all the way through, from Abraham down to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you believe that? Now, once you do, now it's like people won't put a Lord of the Rings deluxe set DVD thing. Oh, bro, bro, don't put it on the floor. Or they won't put, you know, Jordan 12s. Uh, it's like, oh, yo, 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 bro. Now, do you human being truly believe God reached through the portal of divinity from his place and spoke to us yeah absolutely that's to me where the quranic etiquette comes from two major things though so there's no difference of opinion have wudu when you read quran and cover your body in an appropriate way does a lady have to wear hijab no but i recommend you put if you now it's a slippery slope though 
Well, I can read in anything I want. Really? That the, the would you st- if the Quran as it will be on the day of judgment in a living organic form, would you stand in front of it that way? How about we start playing those cards instead of the uh, this is what I can do and I can't do uh, based on this text. How about I will, I Wissam will meet Surah Mulk on the day of judgment. Do I read it, treat it and know it that I the way that I will meet it? Uh, on, on an interesting discussion, I want to give two examples, right? One example, I forgot which, which one of the four major imams of fiqh would, uh, if somebody asked him a fiqh question, he would go like, he'd make wudu and Imam change Malik, it. change his clothes, yeah. put the incense, he would tie a specific turban. Yeah. And please believe me, every time he had to say a hadith, guys, he would stop. The person who had asked him would wait. He would bathe light incense and he would make a seance, if you will, out of it. He would make a, I'm only giving you seance to give you, who would make a ritual out of it. Right. Because just, he said, just saying the hadith, just saying qala Rasulullah, Muhammad peace be upon him said, was uh, needed to be venerated because one day people might be, oh, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and using it in an argument. And I think, I mean, it's also something to say about his professional position in the society and the things that he had to do. And there are certain, I guess, etiquettes that go to another level. But if I were to bring it down to earth to something that's a little bit more relevant today. Oh, but right before we go from there, I yeah. just want to add to him. Okay. He never wore shoes in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, I want In that someone, rocky desert? It, uh, un, yeah, understand. Like, that's a huge thing. Okay. Uh, but That's got to be rough though. Could the person say, uh, the city of Medina, a little bit flatter. Okay. But could the listener say, that's love. Yeah, that's him venerating Imam uh, 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 Abu Hanifa Nu'mani bin Thabit when he would come to the city of Madinatul Munawwara would relieve himself outside of city borders. He would leave. But that's him. like next level, though. Uh, but imagine, I even think the shoes. But both of those mean. Yeah. Uh, because I'm trying Cause, to cause get. Because I, at I, the I just don't saying, want people to get confused, proof? though, right? No, Is I it? want them to. I want them to say, "Would you say that he loved too much?" So I'm not telling them to do this, but they are going to yell back at us saying, where's your proof? Where's your proof? You're losing art. You're losing love, emotion, and human connection. The actions of a generation because it's not written in a book. I mean, they were like, what? Uh, they're only what, two generations apart from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Sallallahu. And we're like, what, 13 now? Yeah. Something like that? No, more. Probably more, yeah. But yes. So, so you're saying a generation, a hundred years? Yeah, I mean, like we could, I mean, this just as a hypothetical, right? The clo- like we are, like they were to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what maybe uh, people we of the Malcolm. 19th century, uh, 18, uh, no, 20th century. 20th century. For, uh, like uh, 1910s and 20s, Okay. right? Like if, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived at 1910, we would be... Yes. Right? And th- they're That's like... That's perspective. Yeah perspective that is a deep perspective look at friends what if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in 100 eight, years ago yeah okay there's right? a bit much whereas we're like what fif- almost 1500 years now for 14 <laughs> nine, yeah absolutely yeah. i just i just want to conclude with a thing right just from a practical perspective what i've observed of you okay right it's just that you know before we're going to record yo we're going to answer questions about quran and things like that you're like yesterday you're like hold up let me you go in there shaping up your, yeah, brush, you know, my teeth. brush your teeth, change Every out your outfit, Absolutely. all of that, right? And and there's a reason why he's looking sharp. He's not like normally with Sam, <laughs> he he he's got like uh, yeah, he got sweat present a t-shirt, totally chill. I love that, right? And uh, you know, case in point. But um, but if he, Bilal says not for the recording, because I'll record and make vlogs, yeah, when whatever. But if you say it's for Quran, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. This and for me as a Tajweed guy, yes, everyone's like, How do you get your teeth white? I clean them. <laughs> <laughs> Quran's coming out of there. So I clean them. I'm aware of what I eat, when I eat it. And yeah, I stay away from certain foods that are going to uh, coat my tongue or not make me feel great. Yes, I think there's an etiquette, a way to carry it up. Um, but I'm going to run to the restroom because talking about Quran and having to go to the restroom, probably not a good idea. Gotcha. So I'm going to take and I'm going to talk to you guys in a little bit.